Hi, I'm Jeff. This is Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north. So today I'm going to try and answer a question that I very often get on my carnivorous plant videos, or more particularly my Nepenthes videos. And that question is, should I add water to my pitcher plants? Or more commonly, should I add water or RO water or distilled water into the pictures of my pitcher plant. And that's what we're going to try and answer today. I'm gonna to give you my opinion, I'm gonna tell you my experiences, and I'm also going to cite a little bit of research that I've found on the subject. So let's jump in. And we are in. So first of all, why would anybody want to add water to the pictures on an Apenthes pitcher plant? Well, there are a couple of reasons. When you send off for Nepenthes through the post, a mail order plant, obviously when the seller is going to sell it through the post, they've got to empty those pictures out. So when it arrives, it very often arrives with completely dry pictures. Even if they didn't empty them out, they would definitely be empty by the time they arrived with you. So what many people do then is they take some reverse osmosis water or some distilled water. So just to be clear, that's water that has no nutrients in it and they go and add a little bit of water into those pitchers. Another reason might be that it is actually quite easy to knock a pitcher if you're either repotting it or you're moving it about and then of course all the liquid drops out of the pitchers. So it's a perfectly common question and it's a perfectly reasonable thing to expect to want to do. So what do we do? Okay, well, opinion is split online about this. I've seen lots and lots of different sources claim that yes, you should do it, and of course, no, you shouldn't do it. Well, I'll give you my opinion. Obviously, it's up to you what you do, but my opinion is, and I'll cut straight to the chase here, no, I don't think you should do it, except in one particular circumstance. I'm gonna explain why. So, when I order things through the post and the Nepenthes arrive completely dry, I always top up a couple of the pictures. Why do I do that? Well, I've not been able to find any evidence that topping up those pictures, A, harms the plant, or B, does the plant any good either. So why do I do it with mail order plants? Well, I've found that by putting a little bit of RO water or a little bit of distilled water into a couple of pitchers, it just prevents them from drying out straight away. Now, obviously, when I buy an expensive plant, it's nice to be able to look at those colourful pitchers. And I don't want them all to die straight away because that's what Nepenthes do. If there is no water in those pitchers, they will soon dry up those pitchers and start to produce some new ones, providing you've got all the cultural requirements that they need. So I always top a couple of the pictures up just to give me a little bit longer looking at those pictures and then I put all my attention and effort into making sure that the cultural conditions are as good as I can get them. Now, for any other circumstance, I wouldn't recommend topping up those pictures. Well, I have a couple of reasons for that. So what actually went through my mind was, first of all, Nepenthes pitcher plants very often have a lid that covers the pitcher, which prevents rainwater from dropping into it. So that gives you a little clue. Now, as with everything in the plant world, some of them are actually quite high up and some of them are angled so that the rainwater will actually get in. So that's not completely conclusive. The second thing that made me think that it's probably not really helping the plant by adding water is that these plants have been going Going through the evolutionary process for millions of years so surely there had to be something slightly different about the, the liquid that was in the pictures than just ordinary water and in fact that turns out to be true which I'll tell you about in a while. So as far as my opinion goes no I don't think you should top up the pictures I think you should leave them and I think you should put all your efforts into creating the right cultural conditions. Now if you've never had Nepenthes before you'll see that they only produce the liquid with brand new pitchers. So as the pitcher forms, you can actually see the liquid sloshing about in the bottom before the lid even opens. So that tells you that the rainwater has absolutely nothing to do with what goes on inside that pitcher. And even more conclusively, there was a study from 2007 which concluded that, and I'm paraphrasing this, Nepenthes have peculiar viscoelastic properties of the digestive fluid, which plays a crucial role in prey capture. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that the liquid isn't just like ordinary water liquid. It has particular characteristics and particular properties that makes it very difficult for prey to escape. So in other words, the liquid in there is very viscous, it's very thick, it's gooey, it's sticky, it's gloopy, and the animals that fall in there cannot escape when in fact, 
If they fell into rainwater or a puddle, then they'd have absolutely no trouble escaping. So you're not actually helping by adding some water of any sort. The plant's not going to be able to use that in order to digest its prey. So here's what they did in this study. They tested some flies and some ants escaping from both water and from the liquid of a Nepenthes pitcher. I think it was Raffelsiana that they used. In their tests, the Nepenthes pitchers had a 100% success rate at preventing this particular fly and these particular ants from escaping from the liquid. 100% success rate. When they did the same test with water, the animals, so the flies and the ants, they had a 100% success rate in escaping. So if that was just rainwater inside a pitcher, both the ants and the flies would have absolutely no trouble in escaping. Now, of course, this doesn't take into account the gooey, sticky substance on the inside of the pitcher, but you see where I'm coming from here. The Penthes have spent millions of years of evolution in creating this thick, gloopy liquid that prevents their prey from escaping. So by adding water into your pitcher, you're not actually helping that. Now, one of the things that might pop into your head is, well, how come if the lid is quite high and the rain falls in it, won't that dilute the substance? Well, they found that even when the pitchers were diluted by 95% rainwater, it was still thick and gloopy enough to prevent those animals from escaping. So there you have it. Filling the pitchers won't actually harm the plants, but it's not gonna help either. It's not going to have any of the digestive enzymes in it, and it's not going to prevent insects from escaping from the pitchers. So if you feel you want to see a little bit of liquid inside those pitchers, go for it. You're not gonna harm anything, but I would far rather wait for them to dry out, cut them off, and then put all my efforts and attentions into creating the right cultural conditions for the Nepenthes to thrive and therefore produce more pictures. So having said that, what you're going to need now is some tips to help you to grow your Nepenthes plants. And I just happen to have a video all about it. And it's coming up in a card just about now. I hope you found that useful. Please give the like button a little tickle because it helps us all as a growing community to grow and to thrive and to learn from each other. For now, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.